King U, a.k.a. John W. Dobbs, 9th Judicial Circuit Court for Orange County, Florida, case number 2006-CF-015201-2006. A-O was initiated without a sworn complaint to get the court jurisdiction over his person or the subject matter. The case docket and register of action actually starts with the statement that on October 25th, 2006, complaint field none, that's the first entry in the docket for his case. Even both the Orange County Sheriff's Office charging affidavit and narrative are facially and patently void because the selection reserved for the signature and seal of a notary public is merely signed by another police officer not authorized to administer oaths. He was brought in and detained by the court as a favor to police who falsely arrested him as a favor to someone else. <clears throat> no criminal complaint before someone authorized to administer oath supported his initiate appearance and no probable cause affidavit supported the court order to detain him based on the finding of a probable cause according to the U.S. in Florida Constitution. He has been subjected to forced imprisonment based on a void process that doesn't exist in the true court of law. This is Crazy Deep. Pass it on to the media, newspaper, magazines, people in the government from all states, activists, bloggers, friends, family, subscribe to the YouTube video, The War for King You, etc. John Dobbs, Florida inmate number C00618, aka Universal, aka King You, a citizen of the United States of America, a brother calling for justice from the justice system. Don't forget to go to American Me, KingUniversal.org, AMKU.org, sign the petition, donate what little you can, signing off, American Me. The facts of the case the state doesn't contest are, on the night of October 24th and early morning of October 25th, 2006, between 1.35 a.m. and 2.15 a.m., John Dobbs, a.k.a. Universal, and his ex-girlfriend, Deanna Washington, while visiting the state of Florida, had stopped to patronize a topless bar called The Dollhouse. Inside the club, the couple met a man named William Troy and briefly engaged in a not-at-all hostile but not quite polite conversation. Around 2 a.m., closing time, the couple left the club and saw Troy with three or four men. Universal's vehicle and the vehicle transporting Troy's party were parked six parking spaces apart. One of the men from Troy's party yelled to the couple something to the effect of they needed security to walk them out. Initially, the statement appeared lighthearted. Universal is entering his car when Troy's friend and employee, Andre Blanco, starts to approach the passenger side of the couple's vehicle. Universal's girlfriend, being the passenger, pointed out that one of them is walking over. Universal asks her to stay in the car, leaves the driver's side, and walks around the back of the car to meet with him. When Blanco arrives, a fight initiates between them, which all parties and witnesses perceive as a fistfight. The fight takes place close to the rear passenger side of Universal's vehicle. Almost immediately, Blanco is knocked down, and his friend Francisco Gautier approaches Universal's, approaches Universal swinging. Universal evades the punches and strikes Gautier with everyone with what everyone perceives as a punch. After being knocked down, Blanco swiftly recovers and attacks Universal from behind. Universal's girlfriend exits the vehicle 
and enters the fight to help Universal as Anthony Riolano and William Troy enter the foray. <clears throat> the couple here, someone yell, get her or get the girl. It's around this time one of them appears to get seriously injured and Universal concedes to resorting to use his pocket knife as Miss Washington is grabbed by Riolano and then tossed to the side ending her courageous attempt to ward them off. Next, while Universal was fighting at least one another, one of Riolano's friends, Riolano approached from behind, grabs Universal from the side by his shirt collar, and strikes him on the head and neck several times. Members of his party feel they are unable to continue, and, Real <clears throat> and he stops hitting Universal. Both Blanco and Gautier notice that they are bleeding and don't know why. Universal gets up and the couple gets in the car. William Troy falls to the ground due to stab wounds. Andre Blanco and Francisco Gautier, they realize they were stabbed. As the couple leaves the parking lot, a truck they believe to be occupied by one of their assailants tries to run them off the road. Hansel Holiday a valet from the club across the street, admittedly not a witness to the incident, claims to have struck Universal's car twice in order to run the couple off the road. In this response to his supervisor, Philip Allen Westfall, the valet from the dollhouse, requests for him to stop their car. On his third attempt, Holiday noticed Universal with a gun pointed in the direction of his attack, and he stops pursuit. Blanco, Gautier, and Riolano, and Troy had consumed a lot of alcohol. King U, aka John W. Dobbs. Ninth Judicial Circuit Court for Orange County, Florida, case number 2006-CF-0152-01-2006-0152-01. Was initiated without a sworn complaint to get the court jurisdiction over his person or the subject matter. The case docket and register of action actually starts with the statement that on October 25th, 2006, complaint field none, that's the first entry in the docket for his case. Even both the Orange County Sheriff's Office charging affidavit and narrative are facially and patently void because the selection reserved for the signature and seal of a notary public is merely signed by another police officer not authorized to administer oaths. He was brought in and detained by the court as a favor to police who falsely arrested him as a favor to someone else. <clears throat> no criminal complaint before someone authorized to administer oath supported his initiate appearance and no probable cause affidavit supported the court order to detain him based on the finding of a probable cause according to the U.S. in Florida Constitution. He has been subjected to forced imprisonment based on a void process that doesn't exist in the true court of law. This is Crazy D. Pass it on to the media, newspaper, magazines, people in the government from all states, activists, bloggers, friends, family. Subscribe to the YouTube video, The War for King You, etc. John Dobbs, Florida inmate number C00618, aka Universal, aka King You a citizen of the United States of America, a brother calling for justice from the justice system.
Don't forget to go to American Me, KingUniversal.org, AMKU.org, sign the petition, donate what little you can, signing off, American Me. The facts of the case the state doesn't contest are on the night of October 24th and early morning of October 25th, 2006, between 1.35 a.m. and 2.15 a.m., John Dobbs, a.k.a. Universal, and his ex-girlfriend, Deanna Washington, while visiting the state of Florida, had stopped to patronize a topless bar called the Dollhouse. Inside the club, the couple met a man named William Troy and briefly engaged in a not at all hostile but not quite polite conversation. Around 2 a.m., closing time, the couple left the club and saw Troy with three or four men. Universal's vehicle and the vehicle transporting Troy's party were parked six parking spaces apart. One of the men from Troy's party yelled to the couple something to the effect of they needed security to walk them out. Initially, the statement appeared light-hearted. Universal is entering his car when Troy's friend and employee, Andre Blanco, starts to approach the passenger side of the couple's vehicle. Universal's girlfriend, being the passenger, pointed out that one of them is walking over. Universal asks her to stay in the car, leaves the driver's side, and walks around the back of the car to meet him. When Blanco arrived, a fight initiates between them, which all parties and witnesses perceive as a fistfight. The fight takes place close to the rear passenger side of Universal's vehicle. Almost immediately, Blanco is knocked down and his friend Francisco Gautier approaches Universal's, approaches Universal swinging. Universal evades the punches and strikes Gautier with, everyone, with what everyone perceives as a punch. After being knocked down, Blanco swiftly recovers and attacks Universal from behind. Universal's girlfriend exits the vehicle and enters the fight to help Universal. As Anthony Riolano and William Troy enter the foray, <clears throat> the couple hear someone yell, Get her or get the girl. It's around this time one of them appears to get seriously injured and Universal concedes to resorting to use his pocket knife as Miss Washington is grabbed by Riolano and then tossed to the side, ending her courageous attempt to ward them off. Next, while Universal was fighting at least one another, one of Riolano's friends, Riolano approached from behind, grabs Universal from the side by his shirt collar, and strikes him on the head and neck several times. Members of his party feel they are unable to continue, and, Real <clears throat> and he stops hitting Universal. Both Blanco and Gautier notice that they are bleeding and don't know why. Universal gets up and the couple gets in the car. William Troy falls to the ground due to stab wounds. Andre Blanco and Francisco Gautier, they realize they were stabbed. As the couple leaves the parking lot, a truck they believe to be occupied by one of their assailants tries to run them off the road. Hansel Holiday a valet from the club across the street, admittedly not a witness to the incident, claims to have struck Universal's car twice in order to run the couple off the road. In this response to his supervisor, Philip Allen Westfall, the valet from the dollhouse, requests for him to stop their car. On his third attempt, Holiday noticed Universal with a gun pointed in the direction of his attack, and he stops pursuit. Blanco, Gautier, and Riolano, and Troy had consumed a lot of alcohol.
This is Universal, otherwise known as John W. Dobbs, Florida inmate number C00618. He gets no visits, has no pen pal, no girl, and virtually no money. His mail has been unjustly restricted. They tried to lose him in the system. We need to make a lot of noise for this guy. If they are going to put us under extra scrutiny for our race, we can at least put them under extra scrutiny to prove our guilt and protect our innocent. Go to AmericanMeetKingUniversal.org or AMKU.org. Sign the petition, give what you can, and help us fight to free King U. I've never been arrested or spent time in prison. The reason I'm wearing a mask is because Universal has powerful enemies that has influenced the courts. I'm calling for justice from the justice system. Universal and his girlfriend got surrounded in a parking lot by his car by five drunk men coming out of a strip club who was trying their best to take him out and kidnap her. The courts have ignored his arguments or generalized them without addressing the specific points, especially about the many errors and in instructing the jury on the law. The prosecutor making up evidence that nobody testified to in her, in her closing argument and knowingly using unexplained perjured testimony to convict him. Some clerks of the court have worked actively to sabotage, including tampering with files in his case. It's more likely because some of the guys who came out on the losing end of the fight come from very wealthy families, and Universal's been representing himself because he can't afford a proper representation for a case of this magnitude. The prison institution has been blocking his mail for reasons not in the rules. Standing up for the equal protection of the 14th Amendment. If he was a person of another class, he would have been called a hero and be interviewed by Oprah and other talk shows. We have to protect ourselves. The stand your ground law should not be selectively applied. It should not be allowed that two different people who commit the same exact act under the same exact circumstances can be treated differently by law enforcement. Law enforcement must apply the law equally. If it was anybody else, he wouldn't have been arrested. The other guy would be. As a nation, we have to figure out a way to help my brother. Even if he did attack and started the whole thing by walking up to one of them and punching them in the face, the fact that the one who got hit claims he had run after him and grabbed him and started hitting him from behind while another guy ran at him and started swinging at him at the same time means he would be only guilty of simple battery. The rest would be self-defense. The facts of the case the state doesn't contest are on the night of October 24th and early morning of October 25th, 2006, between 1.35 a.m. and 2.15 a.m., John Dobbs, a.k.a. Universal, and his ex-girlfriend, Deanna Washington, while visiting the state of Florida, had stopped to patronize a topless bar called the Dollhouse. Inside the club, the couple met a man named William Troy and briefly engaged in a not at all hostile but not quite polite conversation. Around 2 a.m. closing time, the couple left the club and saw Troy with three or four men. Universal's vehicle and the vehicle transporting Troy's party were parked six parking spaces apart. One of the men from Troy's party yelled to the couple something to the effect of they needed security to walk them out. Initially, the statement appeared lighthearted. Universal is entering his car when Troy's friend and employee, Andre Blanco, starts to approach the passenger side of the couple's vehicle. Universal's girlfriend, being the passenger, pointed out that one of them was walking over. 
Universal asks her to stay in the car, leaves the driver's side, and walks around the back of the car to meet with him. When Blanco arrived, a fight initiates between them, which all parties and witnesses perceive as a fist fight. The fight takes place close to the rear passenger side of Universal's vehicle. Almost immediately, Blanco is knocked down and his friend Francisco Goche approaches Universal's, approaches Universal swinging. Universal evades the punches and strikes Goche with everyone with what everyone perceives as a punch. After being knocked down, Blanco swiftly recovers and attacks Universal from behind. Universal's girlfriend exits the vehicle and enters the fight to help Universal. As Anthony Riolano and William Troy enter the foray, <clears throat> the couple hear someone yell, get her or get the girl. It's around this time one of them appears to get seriously injured and Universal concedes to resorting to use his pocket knife as Miss Washington is grabbed by Riolano and then tossed to the side ending her courageous attempt to ward them off. Next, while Universal was fighting at least one another, one of Realano's friends, Realano approached from behind, grabs Universal from the side by his shirt collar and strikes him on the head and neck several times. Members of his party feel they are unable to continue and, Real <clears throat> and he stops hitting Universal. Both Blanco and Gauthier notice that they are bleeding and don't know why. Universal gets up and the couple gets in the car. William Troy falls to the ground due to stab wounds. Andre Blanco and Francisco Gauthier, they realize they were stabbed. As the couple leaves the parking lot, a truck they believe to be occupied by one of their assailants tries to run them off the road. Hansel Holiday, a valet from the club across the street, admittedly not a witness to the incident, claims to have struck Universal's car twice in order to run the couple off the road. In this response to his supervisor, Philip Allen Westfall, the valet from the dollhouse, requests for him to stop their car. On his third attempt, Holiday noticed Universal with a gun pointed in the direction of his attack, and he stops pursuit. Blanco, Gautier, Riolano, and Troy had consumed a large amount of alcohol prior to the incident. Gautier and Riolano claimed not to know who threw the first punch between Universal and Blanco. Blanco, Gautier, and Holiday each have multiple felony convictions. Troy had been convicted of battery on a law enforcement officer. And on the night of the incident, Blanco was on probation. Blanco, though, claiming not to have remained in the fight against Universal and described only being hit once by him, receiving multiple cuts and stabs. Gautier claims too as well, though no evidence was offered outside his testimony. William Troy died as a result of his stab wound. Holiday claimed to have feared for his life. Miss Washington believes their intentions were to take her away from Universal. Universal received multiple injuries, including six cuts, and feared for Miss Washington's safety and eventually his own life. While Universal testified to have seen one of them swinging something shiny, which he perceives as a knife, and security from the club, Justin Idol, claims to have seen one of them hitting Universal with what he believes may have been a key. Everyone testified to nearly seeing, never seen, Universal with a knife during the altercation, except Universal. Universal, the only African American in the fight, was also the only man arrested and accused of a criminal act, although he alerted the arresting officers 
of his self-defense claim. The state does not and cannot refute these facts. After Universal's arrest that night, he was charged by information on November 20th, 2006 with second degree murder with a weapon of William Troy, count one, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon or causing great bodily harm to both Francisco Gauthier and Andre Blanco, counts two and three, aggravated assault with a firearm against Hansel Holiday, count four, and shooting from a vehicle, count five. He beat count five because he never fired the gun. He was sentenced on March 7, 2007 to natural life for count one. Two 15-year sentences for counts two and three, and five years with three years minimum mandatory for count four. Do you know that one word added or missing from a jury instruction can mean guilt or innocence? Check it. If they tell the jury that a man can stand his ground if someone attacks him, but not if he was the aggressor and initially provoked it, you say, okay, not if he started it, but if they take out the word aggressor and just say he can't stand his ground if he initially provoked, that changes everything. One definition for provoke is to anger or irritate. A witness said, after these guys told him he needed security to walk him and his girl out, he said he didn't need nobody to back him up. If the jury believed that because some people think you can provoke somebody by not backing down, that means he loses the right to stand his ground just for standing his ground. When he argues that the instructions allow him to be convicted for a non-existent crime, they never addressed it. They basically tell him, F you and F the law, we own you, Negro. Transcript of taped interview of Andre Blanco conducted by Detective Towton. This is Detective Sam Towton with Orange County Sheriff's Office. Today's date is October the 25th. 2006. The time is 4.12 a.m. I am here at ORMC. I'm also talking with Andre. How's your last name pronounced? Blanco. B-L-A-N-C-O. Andre Blanco. Hey, Andre. Can you go ahead and start from the first when you guys were inside the club and explain what exactly happened tonight? We was in, inside the club drinking as usual when you go to a club. Who was, in, who was inside the club with you? William Troy, Anthony Rolano, and Frank, uh, I don't know his last name. Okay. We walked outside the club. I walked to my car. A guy approached me by fighting. Where, where was your car parked? As soon as you come out the club. Okay, as soon as you come out the club, your car was right there. Yeah, towards the right hand side, if you come at what happened. A fight broke out. Who was fighting? I don't know. That's the whole thing. I was, I mean, I was involved in the fight. Uh huh. Affirmation. But I don't know how it started. That's the whole thing. Okay. Um, now, did you see William Troy in the fight? Not even. Okay. Inaudible. What about Frank? Did, did you see Frank in the fight? I seen him fighting. I got... I can't recognize who was fighting. Uh-huh. Affirmation. But I came to help, okay. And when I came to help, I guess that's what happened. Who, okay. Who's the person that stabbed you? I don't even know. That's the whole thing. I don't even know why the fight started. 
I don't even know. I'm I'm just half helping a friend. Okay, for whatever reason. So now he was there fighting. Do you did you see the guy who he was actually fighting? I seen him. Okay. Can can you describe him for me? You know his height, weight, hair, anything like that? I think he's a black male. Okay. Maybe sh show shaved head. Okay. Um slender, maybe about a buck seventy five at that. Okay, was he was he short, tall? About five seven, five six. Okay, is that the first time you've ever seen this guy? I don't ever remember seeing him. That's the whole thing. It's such a, a flash. Okay, now after the fight broke out, you ran over there, right? To help. Yeah. Okay, now did this guy stab you? Okay, now did this guy stab you that? That you were describing to me? I don't remember even getting stabbed. That's how I just drunk or how fast he was, you think? Yeah, exactly. How many times do you think he cut you? One, two, three, four. Unknown female. You got five. Five. You got two to the face. One on each arm and one on the chest. Detective Talton. <clears throat> okay, cause I see one in the chest and the arms. We could, we could, I see your arm there. One female, inaudible, moaning sound, Detective Talton. Oh, oh, that's right, man. That's all right. You just don't even try. Just don't even try. Moaning sound. So after you were stabbed, explain to me what happened. What happened then? Unknown male. Do you need to get pictures? I didn't know I was stabbed. Yeah. I see a friend, William Troy, on the floor. Uh huh. Probably dead. This was in the parking lot? In the parking lot. So I'm trying to stay with him so he can stay alive. And I realize I'm stabbed myself without even realizing I'm stabbed. Okay. What? Now the guy that, that stabbed him. That stabbed him. Did you ever see him get into a car? Or did you ever see a? I think I see a a Acura. I, I remember. Can't tell you if it's right. Okay. Or it's wrong. Maybe silver in color. Maybe. Okay. There was a lady with him. Okay. Now was. She Hispanic too, or I think she was Hispanic. Okay, and that's pretty much okay. What I remember. So does anyone? So does someone call the sheriff's office from there, or I don't even know. Okay. Now, did you see them arguing when when they came out of the club? Him, him, and uh. I didn't see this Troy like when I walked out I guess I saw a friend fighting uh-huh so I intervened okay trying to I don't know if I was trying to help or trying to break it up who was the person you saw fighting first I don't even know that's the whole thing I it's Everything's a blur right now. Okay. What what about this Latin guy? Do you think you can take him out of the lineup? I think I could definitely could. Okay. 
if I show you a lineup this morning, you know, you think you could pick him out from it? Yes, I could. Okay, great, great. Uh -huh. So, is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you think is important? Or do you think I forgot to ask you? I don't even know how the altercation started. That's the whole thing. I walked out. I think I seen an altercation. So I'm trying to go over there to break it up. And I think it led up into a fight. Okay. After. I don't even know if the fight initiated when I came out. Okay. I know I seen a commotion and I walked over there and I don't know exactly if I fought or if the guy just went to swing in with the blade I don't even know that's the whole thing okay um all right now did you ever see William and this guy arguing inside the club or anything like that no inside the club yeah everything was cool Okay, we walked out to go home, and then I guess the altercation start, started before I even got to my car. Did let me ask, ask you this. Did you hear what was being said? No, that's the whole thing. I, when I walked out, I know it all kicked. I guess the altercation must have happened right when I walked out. Okay. Because inside the club, there was no altercation at all. There was no argument. There was no bad blood between two people, I guess. Okay, and when I got out, it was like a different world, I guess. Okay, alright. Alright then, man. That's going to be the end of our interview. And the time is 4.18 a.m. Transcript has been reviewed by... Review for accuracy signed this 16th day of November 2006. Detective Calvin, OCSO Department Chef. Transcript of taped interview of Philip Westfall. Interview conducted by Detective Phelan. Okay, today is Friday, October the 25th, 2006. The time is 05 1500 hours. I'm Detective David A. Phelan with the Orange County Sheriff's Office Criminal Investigation Division. I'm currently at the dollhouse location at 5570 South Orange Blossom Trail in reference to a death investigation. Orange County case number 06-100229. It's Wednesday, not Friday. Correction on the date, that would be Wednesday, October 25th. And I'm here, speaking with state your first name, last name, and spell it for me. Philip Westfall, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-W-E-S-T-F-A-L-L. -L -L. Philip, what's your date of birth? 5-24-69, and your address? 4613 Kenston Drive, Orlando, Florida. And do you have a phone? Yes, sir. And that number? Sell a home? A home number? Uh, that's not, that's not my roommate's phone. My cell number is 407-353-6399. Okay. And where do you work? The dollhouse. And what is the position at the dollhouse? I'm the valet attendant, and valet attendant means you're in the parking lot most of the time, all night, 
all night. Okay, at approximately uh, 2.15 this morning, uh, was, was your attention brought to an area of the parking lot where a fight was occurring? Yes, sir. And what, what got your attention there? Uh, a female screaming. Okay, and did, did you hear anything? Uh, any words being exchanged or anything? Nothing before I heard her screaming. Okay, and uh, as you turn your attention to, to, as you turn your attention to that, tell me what you observe. I observe a female standing outside the door on the passenger side of a gray Acura. Um, she was yelling at a car about six spaces to the south of where they were parked. She was screaming, uh, there was four gentlemen outside of the car. One of the gentlemen started walking over to their vehicle. Um, the driver phone rings. <clears throat> of the females, of the females vehicle came out of the driver's seat and around the back of the car. Met up with that gentleman, punched him in the face, and that guy went to the ground. Another one of the gentlemen came running over. He started fighting with the gentleman that was that she was with. She tried punching, kicking, and hitting um, that gentleman. All of a sudden, it was four guys fighting a couple. Um, people were being hit, punched, kicked in every direction. I was screaming at them break it up break it up when I started to get real serious I carry mace I pulled out my mace and if anybody was gonna start beating someone somebody down really bad I was gonna hit them with it um, there were people started ripping their shirts off and fighting with the gentleman he was didn't seem like he was punching people very hard but all of a sudden everybody was bloody um, uh, somebody ran up and kicked the female in the back she got up and then the gentleman from the car I witnessed him the last guy that was over there I witnessed the gentleman from the car kind of with a swinging form from outside of his shoulder into the other guy hit him in the face like I know you can't see this on the record but he he swung and hit him like this like that that gentleman started bleeding profusely okay so when you say the somebody got hit in the face did the black gentleman hit hit one of the other guys in the face yes sir or okay the gentleman with the female hit one of the other guys in the face and suddenly there was blood everywhere okay i thought he broke his nose um I got into the middle. The last two people fighting was the gen, the last gentleman that was left here in the tank top, which he had, which he also had a blue uh, suit jacket over it. Okay, he was he had a hold of the driver and was like from behind and was punching him in the side of the head I screamed you can get people's attention really loud really quick by screaming I said 911's been called cops are on the way break it up now or I'll mace you both they let go and separated um the gentleman with the shirt off took about five steps back toward his car he was probably six steps away from me. He had blood all over his chest and his waist 
and a little bit on his face and I was looking to see if everybody was okay making sure that the couple was getting into their car that's when I kind of got between everybody um, I turned and looked at the guy with no shirt on and he fell flat on his back and I was like nothing happened I was thinking to myself nothing just happened to you what's wrong as he was laying on the ground I ran over and looked down and witnessed two puncture wounds in his chest okay one near each nipple I screamed he's been stabbed um stop them stop them I ran over to the back of the car took a very good look at it I looked at the left side of the car it said Acura I looked at the symbol I looked at the other side it said TL but the way TL was written I was in a panic and it and it was saying TC which I know scions are TC not Acura um, it was a great car there was a dent right in the front of the right passenger side tail light that I believe was happened during the fight because somebody went got slammed against the car and I believe that made an imprint a dent there from them uh, I tried to I always carry a pen so I and I always write down tag numbers uh-huh there was no tag there was a tag brace kind of shape like uh, Hurley H or maybe an X uh-huh and behind that there was something written I know the second letter was O but it looked like lost it didn't look like lost it looked like no something most people if they don't have a tag they'll write lost tag uh-huh all I saw was an O on the behind that um, the female was wearing a red shirt she had straight black hair like a black girl hair like a black girl's hair not like a Spanish girl's hair um, the gentleman was dark skin very thin built and very phone rings thin haircut I gotta pause that a second okay on phone giving a statement I'll be right out here right out there thanks for bringing me food um okay so if you saw the female again you think you would be able to recognize her yes sir if you saw the male again the black male you think you'd be able to recognize him I do believe so yes sir okay uh, did you ever see any of the Hispanic men with any kind of weapon no I I I thought I saw the black male like slide something down like he had a knife that you can slide out like that uh-huh at the right at the end I saw him go down like this or he used his thumb to cover it up I I witnessed him do something with a metal object in his hand okay um but that was the only weapon you think you may have seen that was the um I I other than that it was just a fist fight it was yeah I and an audible really when he hit the guy in the mouth that got stabbed in the face I thought he punched him um he actually but at, at the end of it all I did see him 
with something in his hand and realized that that he had cut or stabbed everybody. The gentleman that was that was stabbed in the chest, the gentleman that was stabbed in the face, and the other gentleman did not even realize that they were cut or injured with a weapon until the man passed out and fell to the ground. Uh, as the car was leaving the parking lot, did you uh, solicit anyone to follow it or did you tell someone? Yes. Um, the valet from across the street had heard me screaming and came over to see. I guess to see if I was okay and he was. He came to an abrupt stop as soon as the Acura made a left to go out of, out of there, I said, follow him, follow him, follow him, and pointed, and I still didn't even realize that it was my partner from across the street. I was just saying, follow that car. They were in a crime, and he took off out of here, and the car went down the south through the parking lot on the A west side and then out made a left and went out the south entrance of OBT not the south entrance to Rose okay and then made a right and continued south down 441 and was the uh, truck following it when you last saw it yes sir okay and that'll be the same vehicle that the black male and the black female got into. Yes, sir. Okay. That you described earlier. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did you, the silver car that is parked out there now, that 300M. Yes, sir. Uh, that's the car the Hispanics were in. Yes, sir. Where in relation to the car was the Acura car? How far away? About six spots. About six spots south and one spot east. Okay. And they were ex exchanging words from between the two cars as you first, when you first made, made aware of it. She was screaming. She can't. I blunt and I say what? Yeah. She said yes please. Fuck all y'all niggas. Fuck y'all all. Fuck y'all all. all. And then that's when I came running back because I had no idea if it was a girl from the club. I didn't even yeah. Witness the couple walk into the vehicle. Okay. Cause I was warning warming I was starting to warm up the girls cars okay is there anything else you can think of that may be important that I fail to ask you in this case uh, no I, I like I said I on the suspect vehicle there was a dent that I believe happened during the fight right in front of the right rear tail light um i she was wearing a red shirt with some sort of design or writing on it uh straight straight black hair like a black girl's not not like a spanish um and she had no accent and it was pretty much just a basically drunken people in the back of the parking lot fighting. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, earlier, the, before going on tape, you gave a written statement to the deputy. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In the statement, you, you told what happened. Is everything in the statement accurate, uh, true and correct? Yes. Okay. Do you swear that everything you said on this tape is true and correct? Yes, sir. 
Okay, the time is now zero five two six hours, and that will conclude this interview. This transcript has been reviewed for accuracy of the interview which was sworn before me, signed this 15th day of November 2006. Detective Phelan, O.C. S.O. Department Deputy Sheriff. Trial court proceedings prove beyond a reasonable doubt Universal's actual innocence of counts 1, 2, and 4 and prove the insufficiency of the evidence to sustain count 3. According to state's witness and security for the club, Justin Idle, the incident took place like this. So they, so they were members of the group of four were saying something to the other gentleman regarding that they had, that that gentleman had to walk out with security. Yes, okay, so what was in it? So what was his response to them saying that to him? Um, he said he doesn't need any anybody to back him up. Where is he when he is saying that? He's standing at the driver's side of the door at his vehicle. The door is open and he's standing right at the driver's side. What happened next? Did he get into his vehicle? No. He, from what I remember, he stood there besides his vehicle. Then the, some of the other gentlemen began to continue yelling. I can't recall what they were yelling, but slowly walked toward his vehicle. Then it looked like they was going to be a fight. So I told my security my other security guy, Leo, to call the police, at which time when I turned back around, they were fist fighting. At least three of them started advancing on the black male, black female. They started to walk toward him and continue to yell at him. Okay, all right. Now the fight starts and you didn't see who started the fight. Who started this fight, did you? No. And everybody was throwing punches back and forth and fighting, yes? And then you mentioned that the, one of the group of males, I know it's confusing because we don't, you are not sure of names. One of the group of four came up behind the black male and actually hit him with, hit him in the throat with something. Yes, but you don't know what that object was. No. Was it dark out there? Yes, pretty dark. You said that the men had surrounded the black male. Yes. At one point, when that happened, um, the black male was kind of on the ground all kind of squatted down. Squatted down, yes. Kind of like leaned over, more in a defensive po position, not more. As security clearly perceived that these men advanced on Universal and his female companion, with violent intent, certainly it was reasonable for Universal to share his shared his view. Universal reasonably believed that to stand his ground and defend himself and his girlfriend, it was necessary to meet force with force, even deadly force against their multiple assailants. Still, Universal initially tried to repeal them with his fists. According to the state's witness, and valet for the club, Philip Westfall, the incident took place like this. Adversary preliminary hearing. Uh, and when he, 
when the Hispanic male walked those 30 feet to the black male, what did you hear or what did you see first? What did you first see happen? As he was approaching him, it was looking like they were going to fight and then the black male swung and hit him and instantly he spun, caught himself from caught himself on the ground with his hands. He didn't hit the ground and fall. He almost did, but he caught himself with his hands and got back up. Okay. After the Hispanic male got was hit, did the three Hispanics what did they what did the three other friends do? The second one approached. Okay, and what did he do? He swung at the black male twice, missed, and then the black male hit him. Okay, and then what happened? The female doing what was the female doing at this time? Screaming. And as the third guy approached, she attacked him. Okay, so the female was trying to ward off the third person coming up. Yes. Okay. I don't... I think I focus back on the black male fighting. The first first gentleman, he, he would... He was fighting very well and he, he, the guys would approach him. He knocked them back real quick and, but, but these guys kept coming, right? Yes, man. No, I just want to know any type of interaction between the guy who eventually died and the black gentleman. Did you see them fight at all? Yes, he was coming after the black gentleman. And to be honest, I do believe I saw the two punches in his chest that made the wounds. He hit him twice in the chest and then spun off that way. Off to the left and went behind me. The other gentleman, right instantly came from kind of the passenger door where the female was after him he hit him with a right hook what looked to me like a right hook in the face and he spun off back the other direction and then that was that's when I started seeing all of the blood Going to the last part of what you had said earlier, which was you didn't see the fourth guy getting some punches. Is that correct? I did not see the co connection of the last gentleman fighting who did get the lick punches in. I did not see them connect to connect. I was facing the direction I was facing this direction I was facing away from that at the time at that point when I turned around the Hispanic gentleman had him by the shirt punching him I saw at least three punches in the face and that was the black gentleman on the floor on the floor though, he was going down, but he wasn't letting him go. Based upon the preponderance of the evidence standard after the adversary preliminary hearing, Universal's immunity from prosecution should have been recognized. Even the arresting officer, Deputy Herbert Mercado, testified, referring to Universal as the victim twice. As the transcripts of the tape interview by Orange County detectives verify, there wasn't even an allegation made by eyewitnesses or alleged victims inferring that Universal was not acting in defense of himself or another. 
Universal was the only man arrested, but should have been the only man released after questioning. As Justin Idol testified and Leonard Bellano provided in his interview with detectives, he had Leo call police prior to anyone being hurt because he saw four men moving toward one man and woman with violent intent. Clearly, security viewed their advance as too much to handle, therefore too much for one man and a female to handle, and called police initially on the couple's behalf. Obviously, this is why Deputy Mikado referred to Universal as the victim, because he understood the couple to be the initial and intended victims of the altercation. Suspiciously, the 911 tapes Universal asserted held exculpatory evidence from calls made before, during, and after the incident and loss of life. In an almost unprecedented event were damaged while in police custody. Nevertheless, even though the valet Philip Allen Westfall provided a watered down version of his prior testimony at trial, at, at trial his testimony favored Universal as a matter of law. And who did you hear screaming? A female. And who was over in that direction? There were four gentlemen by their vehicle here. And who was she with by the vehicle that she was standing in the passenger door of? There was a black gentleman at the driver's side of that vehicle. And what did the black gentleman at the driver's side of the vehicle do? If anything, um, when she was done screaming, there was one gentleman walking in this direction. Their vehicle was parked approximately right there. He came from the driver's side. Can you use this car as an example? He came from the driver's door around the back of the car to meet the other gentleman and punched him in the head. A second gentleman from the vehicle traveled over to the to the black gentleman. And what did he do when he got there? He swung at the guy twice. He missed both times and the black guy hit him. And what were the other, the remaining two guys doing at this point? After the second gentleman got hit, a third one from the silver vehicle was walking over and the female in this vehicle who was still by the passenger door area attacked him. And the car that Mr. Dobbs was in was about 40 feet away, is that correct? I'd say there's two spaces between these vehicles. It would be, it would be one, two, three, four, five, or six spaces away, and one row back. <clears throat> In a state where it is lawful for a man to stand his ground, shoot and kill another for advancing on him with violent intent in order to prevent, to prevent harm to himself and or a, another and be innocent of crime, can a man have been lawfully deemed guilty of a crime merely because the jury may have believed he threw the first punch instead of bullet or used a pocket knife while facing the same circumstances? Even if they knew it was four or five men rather than just one that's legally necessary, Surely they were confused or misled as to the law. Universal seriously doubt George Zimmerman's jury was given the initial provocation instructions. The testimony of participants in the altercation as well 
provide overwhelming evidence of Universal's actual innocence to the degree that no scenario admitted into evidence can be viewed to lawfully support a conclusion that the prosecution met its burden to prove Universal did not act in self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. Even prosecutor Kimberly Laskoff's closing argument that Universal reacted to the advance of these men by immediately swinging wildly with the pocket knife, cutting and stabbing them as they approached him is legally insufficient. Not only is it not supported by con competitors' substantial evidence, but as a matter of law, to rebuke universal defense of justifiable use of force, the prosecution must provide evidence that these men advanced upon and surrounded the couple without the intent to do harm. To depict Universal as the villain in this situation is to legitimize and perpetuate the old slave owner's phobia of African Americans rising in the face of oppression. According to the trial testimony of Deanna Washington, the black female who was girlfriend and fiance of Universal, and ambition of these drunk men that night. And you never saw John Dobbs with a knife, did you? That is correct. Okay, and when the first gentleman hit John Dobbs, isn't it true that what happened at this point is John hit him so hard he knocked him to the ground? All I remember is um, blood everywhere. I remember from that first guy that was walking to our car, attacked John Dobbs. Okay, and then when did you see somebody else come up? I seen someone come up after the fact that the guy, he was still trying to attack and get like strength. <clears throat> you are not sure when the second guy came, came over, no. And you were still in your car at this point. Yes. All right. All right. And when did you get out of your car? I got out the car when I noticed the other three guys from the group ran over and surrounded him. John Dobbs. You can finish. Okay. The guys from the three, as in, as in from walking from their car came over and attacked John Dobbs as in surrounding him and all he could do is swing on whoever that was coming toward him and Miss Washington also testified that she believed they intended to take her away from Universal According to crime scene investigator Allison Wright, whom during his police interrogation, Universal asked, have you ever heard of anything like this? And she said, and she responded, self-defense? Yeah. Universal received several injuries from his assailants, some of which were Hey, now again, you noted several injuries to Mr. Dobbs. Yes, I did. And you noted the left upper lip was swollen. Yes. There was a cut on the right eyebrow. Yes. A cut on the right chin. Yes. There was an abrasion on the left knee. Yes. There was a cut on the right thumb. Yes. There was... Abrasions on the right and left little finger. Yes, there was a cut on the middle finger. Yes, there were two cuts on the left forearm. Yes, okay. And there are also in the injuries to Mr. Dobbs, you noted there were linear red marks on the left chest. Yes.
The state's expert witness supervising crime scene investigator Susan Mears testified that the average parking space is around 10 feet wide. The state adopted the position that the vehicles were six parking spaces apart. This would indicate the vehicles were around 60 feet apart. Universal closed the distance by around 10 feet in moving from the driver's side to the rear passenger side to intercept their advance toward Miss Washington. Their assailants traveled at least 50 feet to initiate the confrontation. CSI Susan Mears also testified that based on the blood spatter evidence found on Universal's Acura, the altercation took place close to the rear passenger side of the car. Regarding count one, the second degree murder of William Troy, though Universal and Miss Washington testified describing five men attacking rather than Justin Idols and Philip Westfall's four, nevertheless, the very evidence offered to obtain the conviction is the same evidence that established Universal's actual innocence. Even Troy's cohorts demonstrated that he was third or fourth in the battle and struck by the fatal blows as he became one of Universal's multiple assailants. Thus, Universal was sentenced to life in prison for a murder that did not occur as the homicide was justified as a matter of law. According to West Florida Practice Series, Florida Evidence, Code 90.604, lack of personal knowledge, except as otherwise provided in 90.702. Expert witnesses, a witness may not testify to a matter unless evidence is introduced, which is sufficient to support a finding that the witness has personal knowledge of the matter. Evidence to provide personal knowledge may be given by the witness, by the witness own testimony. Section 604.1 states, 90.604 provides that a witness must have personal knowledge of the matter about which he or she testifies. The testimony must be based on matters perceived by the sense of the witness. In the, inst in the instant case, none of the adversary witnesses perceived that Universal had resorted to using his pocket knife with either of their five senses until the entire altercation had ended. Therefore, it cannot be used to justify their aggression and any statements contrary to universals in regard exp in regard expressed a lack of personal knowledge according to anthony riolano who is recognized as the fourth or fifth from the group to engage universal <clears throat> and who was the who was the altercation with the altercation started between the male that was in the vehicle and one of the people that were with us. Could you tell who hit who first? No, okay. How long until somebody else, a third person joined in? Are we talking minutes, seconds? This all happened, I mean, to my recollection, the whole thing maybe was about 45 seconds or something like that, maybe a minute or so. It wasn't very long at all. When you say the whole thing, are you talking about everybody getting involved? Yeah, the whole altercation. As far as your specific question, um, I would say a couple seconds, maybe 10 seconds, five seconds, something like that. When you approached him, was he fighting with another member of your party at the time that you approached him? I believe so. 
what did you do when you approached him on his side? Um, I grabbed him by the side of his shirt and I hit him maybe three or four times and then everything stopped. We're about, we're about on his body where you hitting him towards the back, like his neck and maybe the back of his head area. So you stopped swinging as well as soon as he was started as soon as he was started walking away. No, I was just I hit him like three or four times and then I stopped hitting him. And then he got up, you know, and he went toward his vehicle and Sir, at any time did you see the defendant or the female with any knives, guns, weapons, anything like that. No. Was there a lot of blood when this ha this was happening, when this fight was occurring? During the altercation, I didn't notice, you know, I didn't notice a lot of blood. It was after when we noticed that William was on the floor. At this point, had somebody said that they were calling 911 or not at all. I, I recall, you know, Andre and Francisco then st started to notice that they were stabbed. So they started tending to their injuries and I stayed with William. So you, I mean, would you consider yourself intoxicated at the point that you wouldn't have driven that night I wouldn't have driven no as Riolano testified to being too drunk to drive and attacking Universal because his friends were having a hard time whipping him rather than be rather than because Universal was using a weapon and irrespective irrespective of whether or not Universal was defending himself. His testimony His testimony amounts to a confession of a crime against Universal and Universal in person imprisonment suggests that Florida enforces some unpublicized policies that African Americans are free as long as they submit to abuse from other races or tourists are welcome as long as they submit to abuse from good old boy factions. According to trial testimony of the manager of the strip club, the dollhouse, Mr. Swift, which the trial court unre unreasonably deny the jury the privilege of hearing, Andre Blanco came back to the club to apologize for the incident. When he came to apologize, did he apologize for what had, what they had done at the dollhouse? Well, actually, for the most part, and then actually what had transpired because they were regular customers at our club. And I guess what happened was, I guess, the negative publicity, or I guess any publicity at all, is what he came to apologize for. So yes, did he also apologize for what had happened? Yes, the testimony was not hearsay and was exculpatory showing evidence of Blanco's consciousness of guilt. Victims did not usually feel the need to apologize for being attacked. The trial court intentions are questionable for specifically ordering Mr. Swift not to testify to the to that in the jury's presence. <clears throat> According to Andre Blanco's adversary preliminary hearing testimony concerning the death of William Troy. Okay, and after Frank, you saw Frank hit Mr. Dobbs. Did you see 
Mr. Troy or your other friend? No. Okay, so at that time, you had turned away. You weren't really paying attention, exactly. You mean, you couldn't tell that it was three people on one? No, it never was three people on one. Okay, well, how would you know that? You weren't looking. Okay, you're right. I never actually saw Will get hit. Okay, so you never saw them in a confrontation. No. At least this portion of his testimony is con consistent with his transcript of taped interviews with detectives that night. His trial testimony is regard in regard is another unexplained story. As I looked over to the left, I saw Frank. I guess he was trying to help me because I got hit and he got stabbed as as well and then Will and the gentleman were scuffling together and when I looked over I will see Will on the ground on trial after alleging he was stabbed before he attacked Universal but didn't know he was stabbed Blanco claimed to have seen Universal wrestling with William and while they're wrestling at this time, Will is on the ground. Yet, even ignoring the unexplained contradictory statement made under oath, an official proceeding violating Florida's perjury statute 837.021, which the prosecutor must have been aware of, Blanco's failure to imply who initiated the violence between Universal and Troy while implying that Troy was at a disadvantage. The total totality of the circumstances still exonerated Universal. Universal fending off both Blanco and Frank must be considered an aggravate, aggravating factor when Troy enters the fact enters the foray. Regarding counts two, the, ag the aggravated battery of Francisco Gauthier, Gauthier's own trial testimony exonerates Universal, proves his use of force was justified and that he committed no crime. What happened? Can you tell the jury? Um, basically, Andre Andre walked over to him. They started fighting. He hit Andre with a good punch. The two of them started fighting. Did you see who started it? Who hit who first? No. And then what happened? The fight ensued and basically when Andre fell down to the floor, I ran over there and the girl, why? because I wanted to help my friend. My friend just hit the floor. I don't know why he hit the floor, so I ran over there. And as soon as I ran over there, the girlfriend was jumping around and I can't really say what she was saying, but she was talking nonsense. And as soon as I ran over there, I kind of took my eyes off the defendant and looked at her. And I swung, swung, but I didn't get anything. And I got punched and he stabbed me in the face. What were you swinging at, Mr. Dobbs? Did you see a knife? Never seen a knife. Okay, and wasn't it a situation where, where did the four of you at one time go over to the defendant? when the fight happened? No, it was pretty much a one-on-one -on -one until of course I seen Andre fall on the floor and then I ran over. Um, we didn't jump him or anything like that. All right, and you also mentioned that, that this was one after another coming up and fighting with Mr. Dobbs. Is that right? That is correct. 
and you didn't know that you were cut until later on. That is correct. Goche demonstrably testified that the good punch Universal hit Blanco with was not the first punch thrown, being it was thrown after the fight had already started and admits to attacking Universal immediately after Blanco fell, a fall which occurred within the first few seconds of the altercation and did not eliminate Blanco from the equation. Goche verified that Universal's initial repelled, initially repelled Blanco with non-deadly force, using only fist against him, and Goche himself as well, as he claims to have been punched and then stabbed. Goche also verified that the, the fight was only one-on-one -on -one for the first couple of seconds, and that Universal only acted in response to acts of aggression from his party. No crime was committed, no crime was demonstrated. Universal's use of force was justified. Even deadly force after Blanco fell but got up to attack from behind, while Goche attacked from the front and all this in, fir in the first few seconds of the fight. Regarding count three, the aggravated battery of Andre Blanco, Blanco's own t trial testimony is not only perjured, but insufficient to sustain the conviction and exculpatory as it activates Universal's right to defend himself from the earliest moments of the altercation. What happened? Um, when the guy got into the car and the lady got into the car they drove like in the parking lot to another section into the parking lot which was parallel to my car and the gentleman jumped out of the car when he jumped out he lunged at my face he what he lunged at my face i thought i got punched hard because i fell to the ground but i actually got stabbed in my face <clears throat> and did you approach their car? No, I did not. Now, what happened when the lunging happened? When I got hit, I spun around to the floor. I held my balance with my right hand. I got back up and saw the body that actually hit me. Ran after him, grabbed him by the back of the neck started hitting him there okay and what happened did you get hurt after yeah after I went after him and I grabbed him by the back of the neck and started hitting him my body started feeling weak so I walked away from the actual confrontation and I started to lose I guess consciousness because I was, I guess, I was losing blood, but I felt real weak and faint. <clears throat> did you ever see a knife? No, I did not. Was it an instance where he was in his car and all four of you approached his car? No, okay. And did the four of you attack him? No, we did not. Okay. Yeah, where did you get in a fight? Oh, anyway, <clears throat> he, when he came out of the car, I guess I was the first one that he could approach. And I then, I uh, like, like I, like I said, he just lunged at me. I got stabbed. I realized that I got, I didn't realize that I got stabbed. I felt that I got hit real hard, so then I went back and attacked him. How far apart were you when you went? Probably about five feet, six feet. Then why, then why do you think, what makes you tell the jury you got stabbed? All the blood, the slices in my face, my arm, my chest, you also saw at any given time, any given point, 
in time, you have also seen at least one of your friends punching Mr. Dobbs as well. Is that true? Yes. Isn't it also true that you, about a week later, you returned to the dollhouse? Yes. Rocco's description of only being struck once infers that his claim to have been stabbed in the initial confrontation is a reason is reasonable conclusion through process of elimination yet he also testified to having been having been cut or stabbed multiple times a fact that his theory of events does not allow for clearly he engaged a fact that his theory of events does not allow for clearly he engaged universal more times or, lo or longer than he admits he received slices to his face which is plural he gave the jury no reason to believe he didn't get cut for the first time around the same time he receives his other cuts which is later in the fight along with the fact that Blanco is obviously willing to commit perjury regarding whether he initially approached the couple's vehicle precipitating the confrontation and whether his friend approached or attacked Universal as they confess Blanco provided no demonstrable evidence to substantiate his claim that what he perceived as a punch was actually a stab and provides proof beyond a reasonable doubt that he lacked personal knowledge as to any specific point during the battle that the stabbings actually occurred. His testimony, which is the only conflicting evidence on the matter, is insufficient to rebuke Universal's claim that he stated he, he started using his pocket knife after facing multiple assailants. Blanco perceived no knife, no blood, and no serious injuries as a result of being floored with either of his five senses prior to running up and grabbing and attacking Universal from behind. Even if the jury chose to believe his scenario wholeheartedly, Universal can only be under the un Universal can only be under the scenario held accountable of simple battery. After which, according to Blanco, Universal posed no threat and he had to chase him down to exact his revenge, triggering Universal's right to defend himself from the earliest moments of the confrontation under his own scenario. Universal cannot be deemed duly convicted of the aggravated battery as the state must show a sufficient link between the weapon and the crime alleged if it failed to overcome Universal's constitutional presumption of innocence. Also, the prosecution must be deemed aware that Blanco had to be told by detectives where and how many times he'd been stabbed as well as that he told them he never knew he was stabbed because he was drunk and that he thinks he saw someone else fighting and only ran over there to help a friend. Regarding count four, the aggravated assault of Hansel Holiday, Holiday's own trial testimony exonerates Universal, proves his use of force was justified and that he committed no crime of aggravated assault. I was in a F-154 truck and so you drove across the street and did you actually stop and talk with somebody? No, Alan told me to stop that car right there. It was an Acura, a gray Acura. And what did you do? 
I hit the vehicle, tried to stop it. Now, if you are, now, if, if are you, when are you doing this? Are you honking the horn or doing anything like that? No. When you pulled alongside of it, what was your intention then? My intention was to try to force it off the road. You stated that as soon as you saw the gun out the window, that's when you hit the brakes. Yes. Your supervisor, does Alan go by the name Philip? Yes, Philip Westfall. I think that his last name, that's his last name. I don't really know his last name. Now, an F-150, that's a pretty big truck, isn't it? Yes, it is. We are clear on that. You are chasing them down the road, hitting their car twice, trying to ram them off the road. Right. And you have no lawful authority to stop anyone, do you? No. It pains Universal to admit that in light of such evidence and reckless perjury, his being the only man arrested and charged with criminal conduct suggests some sinister motive and reasoning on the part of the prosecution. In the instant case, the prosecutor violated just about every due process protection clause regarding closing arguments seeking to secure the conviction and perhaps most damaging of all made the error in the complaint of instructions a feature of her of her closing argument florida criminal practice and procedure 13.34 b3 states with regard to closing arguments an obvious kind of prohibited argument is that which refers to matters outside of evidence admitted at trial. This impropriety is obvious because it offends the very purpose of closing arguments to apply the evidence admitted at trial to the law of the case. In the instant case, the faith of the people in the prosecutor's intentions was abused and leveraged to condemn an innocent man. For example, during closing arguments, the prosecutor presented a number of falsehoods as facts with statements about universals such as he was mad, pissed off, and fired up in an effort to inflame the jury. The prosecutor went so far as to defame Miss Washington's nature intentions and fear claiming she was egging him on even fabricating words for a non-existent exchange between the couple and use phantom evidence with statements like he got out the car with the knife in his hand he held the knife like this demonstrating the knife being held in a position no one testified to and in in opposition to Universal's testimony. And he cut himself in an effort to blind the jury to the evidence of Universal's desperate situation and make them com comfortable with the thoughts of an outrage, uh, outrageous conviction. The prosecutor made an enormous effect the prosecutor made an enormous effort to deprive the jury of its pardoning power by asserting at least 10 times it wasn't self-defense or it wasn't a lawful act and offering her personal opinion that there's no way he didn't get out of his car and commit murder and aggravated battery. The prosecutors vouch for the credibility of the complaining witnesses, telling the jury that they didn't get together and make this up. In fact, she even advised that the confliction is their testimony, attest, attested to their honesty. 
while calling Universal a liar, claiming that his that his expressed concern for his girlfriend was merely a magic trick to fool them, and on top of all this, irrational bias argued as if a matter of law that Universal had an obligation to back down with statements like he could have left and he should have left on several occasions. In light of the prosecutors conceding that Andre walks over despite Andre's testimony that he did not, the prosecutor must be viewed to have been aware of his perjury yet rather than fulfill its ethical obligations. The prosecution chose to muddle the facts by adopting Universal's version of events which the evidence supported and presenting a twisted version of Blanco depicting him as an innocent victim. Throughout Universal's more than nine years of unlawful incarceration, Universal has struggled to understand what could motivate a number of state officials to condone such obvious injustice. Being aware that Blanco was on probation at the time and changed his version of events with each proceeding. In a state where mere negative police contact usually result in violation, and he and the other complaining witnesses each had multiple felony convictions. Ultimately, Universal can perceive no other reason besides race and vindict vindictiveness to appease the well-connected, wealthy, and prestigious William John Troy III, who is father of the deceased William John Troy IV, while Universal is a man of humble means and background. The prosecutor made an enormous effort to deprive the jury of its pardoning power by asserting at least 10 times it wasn't self-defense or it wasn't a lawful act and offering a personal opinion that there's no way he didn't get out of his car and commit murder and aggravated battery. The prosecutor vouched for the credibility of the complaining witnesses telling the jury that they didn't get together and make this up. In fact, she even advised that the conflict, the conflicts in their testimony attest to their honesty. While calling Universal a liar and claiming that he, that his expressed concerns for his girlfriend was merely a magic trick to fool them and on top of all this, irrational behavior argued as if a matter of law that Universal had an obligation to back down with statements like he could have left and he should have left on several occasions. In light of the prosecutors conceding that Andre walks over despite Andre's testimony that he did not the prosecutor must be viewed to have been aware of his perjury, yet rather than fulfill its ethical obligation, the prosecutor chose to muddle the facts by adopting Universal's version of events which the evidence supported and presenting a twisted version of Blanco's depicting him as an innocent victim. Throughout Universal's more than nine years of unlawful incarceration, Universal has struggled to understand what could motivate a number of state officials to condone such obvious injustice. Being aware that Blanco was on probation at the time and changed his version of events with each proceeding, in a state where mere negative police contact usually results in a violation and he and the other complaining witnesses each had multiple felony convictions, ultimately Universal can perceive no other reason besides race and vindictiveness to appease the well-connected, wealthy, and prestigious William John Troy 
who is father of the deceased William John Troy IV, while Universal is a man of humble means and This is crazy deep. Pass it on to the media, newspaper, magazines, people in the government, from all states, activists, bloggers, friends, family. Subscribe to the YouTube video, The War for King You, etc. John Dobbs, Florida inmate number C00618, aka Universal, aka King You. A citizen of the United States of America, a brother calling for justice from the justice system. Don't forget to go to AmericanMe, KingUniversal.org, AMKU.org, sign the petition, donate what little you can, signing off, AmericanMe.